Got a problem with the hive we have to deal with, and I don't want to do it. But I've got to. Here's the scenario. About a week and a half ago, I went over to this hive, opened it up. I didn't like what I saw. I didn't see any brood at all. No eggs, no larva, no pupae. I did not see a queen. I saw zero brood and not much nectar or stored honey at all. I don't see any sign of any eggs or brood at all. This is a queenless colony. Now this has been a hive that I've featured in the video several times in the spring and throughout the summer. They had two full supers capped over. Those two supers are, were mainly drained out uh, a week and a half ago. So what we're going to do today is go in. It's almost fall. Bees are going to be really more agitated because they're all home, not much foraging going on. We're going to jump in there and solve the problem. Here's how we're going to solve it. We're going to look to see if maybe they were raising a new queen. Fingers crossed, maybe they had a virgin queen mating last week when I was looking, and now she's picked up and started laying. We'll see some brood. Other scenario, no sign of a queen. And at that point, I'm going to pull a queen from another hive, put her in a cage, drop her in there and let the other hive that I took the queen from raise their own queen because they have a lot of brood. They're not really lacking, and that little brood break will be good for them. But we're not, we're not gonna know until we jump in there, and we're gonna take all of our fall inspection advice that I gave you in my last video. If you haven't seen that video, uh, click on this up above, and it will tell you how to prepare for that fall inspection when bees are a lot more defensive. But for now, let's jump in that hive and let's solve the problem. First thing we're going to do is take off our honey supers, but because we think this hive is either queenless or they've just started raising a queen that may still be a virgin queen, we're going to have to take a look at the honey supers to make sure there's not a queen in there. Take this top cover off, turn it upside down off to my side, and now I just want to kind of look at this super here. Not a lot going on up in the super. I'm going to try to make this 15 minutes or shorter because that's what I encouraged all of you to do. But this hive is in trouble. I don't believe there's a queen present. I don't believe there's any brood present. And so we need to make sure before we drop another queen in there. So obviously there's no queen laying brood up in this super. And I can tell that. It would be in the middle if she was. So we're going to take this super off, and the way I'm going to do it, remember this is a fall inspection. We're just a few days away from fall. There's not much for the bees to be going out for today. Everybody's home for the most part. So we need to use a large amount of smoke. Now let's look at this next super to see if there's a queen in there or any sign of a queen such as eggs, larvae, or pupae. I think I can pull this center frame up without hurting any bees or comb next to it. It doesn't look overly thick. If it's real thick, you want to start on the edge to allow some space between frames. The larger size cells are typically drone size cell. They're just putting honey in them. So there's no sign of any eggs in those open cells there. If there was a queen present, she would have filled those up. So we're going to drop this super off out of our way and go deeper. Using a lot of smoke means I'm going to smoke this top. And then as I start to open up the section right here below this super, I indeed want to blow smoke into this crack between the deep and the super. So don't forget to do that. So what I'm going to do is try to work some space. Ooh, that's tight. And once I do that, I'm going to blow smoke between my deep and my super before I lift it off.
All right. Remember, I'm leaving it in such a way where I can put it back on really fast. So is there a queen in this deep? We're going to do the same thing. See if we can lift up this frame right here just to speed up our inspection and see if there's any brood on it. It's the middle frame, close to the middle of the brood nest area in the top deep. Okay, well, this is a good sign. As I can see, I see larvae in the middle. So my suspicions were correct. I believe that they raised another queen to replace a queen and she's been laying well. I can see eggs. I can see larvae of different stages. Look at that bee bread up at the top there. Uh, we can look for the queen real quick. She could possibly be here. Go ahead, I don't see her there. Let's check the other side. Ooh, yeah, the brood has started. Uh, I checked this a couple of weeks ago. Did not see anything like this at all. I did not see any brood, no eggs, no larvae, no brood at all. And I made a commitment to come here today and put a queen in here. But just as I suspected, they have been raising a replacement queen. She got mated. Look at that gorgeous bee bread around the edges. Now to look again, let's leave this uh, frame outside the hive. And let's look at another frame. Now let's smoke our bees. If you get too overwhelmed or too excited about what you're seeing, you're going to forget to smoke these bees and we have to work kind of fast. Let's look at the frame next to that one and see what's on it. Oh yeah, this was not here the last time I looked. I'm so happy to see that because I was worried about this hive making a comeback before winter. But they're doing an excellent job getting some capped over brood. Again, remember that brood that we're seeing are bees of winter physiology once they emerge. And that brood is good and solid. There's no perforation as I talked about in my last video. It really looks good. I see you still see some drones. They haven't started kicking all the drones out yet. So my inspection is over. I don't want to risk killing my queen by continuing to inspect. So right now I'm just going to put the hive back together. Now I got to use smoke immediately right now because I can tell the bees are getting a little more flighty, a lot more activity around my head. And I'm just going to put it back together. I'm going to drop this one frame in here. I'm going to look again to make sure my queen isn't on this one before I put it back. Make sure she's not on an edge board of the frame. I see that queen cell at the bottom. It's a queen cup with nothing in it. I'm going to leave that. Slide it in in such a way that you're not killing any bees. And before you set it all the way down, try to get the bees away from the ears, uh, these little ears of the frame, by smoking them. I can't tell you how happy I am. This is going to be a lot of work for me to queen this hive. If it was queenless here, in late summer, early fall. All right, here we go. We're going to put our super on. Let me show you how I recommended in my last video that I stack my supers over there. I got my upside down top cover and I've got my supers lined up so I can grab them and put them back on. Let's do that now. Sometimes they get stuck, but this one's not too bad. Let's 
square up your corners, smoke again. Now I'm going to smoke this super here and the super that I'm about to put on as well. I'm trying to keep these bees as calm as possible. Well, as you can see, this was a good inspection. The bees kind of got a little rowdy. You can see there's several around me right now, and it didn't take me that long to get in there. I'll have to look at the in the edit room to see how long I was able to make an assessment and get out of there. That's what I'm really recommending you do. Don't spend a lot of time uh, inspecting when there's a dearth, late in the summer, early fall. So I'm gonna go back to the table here in a few minutes. We're gonna talk about what this hive needs, what we think's right and wrong with it, what we need to do to get it ready for winter. That's gonna be real educational. Please don't go away. You need to watch what I'm gonna say to get this hive ready for winter. It's not quite there right now. It's really in sort of bad shape. So I'm gonna show you what we need to do and it's gonna be really educational. Might be the same thing you need to do for your hive, but check this out before we do that. That's my phone ringing, but look up here. I put an umbrella over the top of my inspection area today, looking at two hives. And this little umbrella uh, really worked out well for me to just drop it in right here. Um, I would encourage you to do that. I don't know why I haven't done this before, but it's so cool. What an idea, right? I don't have to stand, there's no wind and the sun is just beating down at about 86 degrees right now. And it's pretty hot, I'm sweating, but now I'm out of the sun because of the umbrella. <laughs> now, in package B production, when we make up our packages, it's really hot, and for years, we, didn't, we were just in the middle of the field in the hot sun making packages up. So someone came up with the idea about three or four years ago to put a canopy up over the main stations where we do our package B operation, and boy, that saved the day. And so I kind of just did the same thing here. So this is something you may want to think about. I'll leave a link down below where you can get the, an umbrella like this, but you can go to any store uh, like Home Depot, Menards, Lowe's, and they have umbrellas, patio umbrellas. You can check that out in your area. I want to go back to the picnic table and I want us to talk about what we're doing, what we've seen, why we took the action that we did and then what further action needs to be taken on this hive now that it's fall. Well, didn't we luck out? Oh my gosh, brood, brood everywhere. Good job. You'll notice that I didn't spend a lot of time trying to see the queen or really looking for other evidence of brood. At that point, I, I feel good about the queen getting her rhythm picked up and starting to lay. Didn't want to disturb it that much. Saw a couple of frames of good solid brood and very active queen. And we saw some honey that was starting to be put up in those supers. That was a good sign. So what are we going to do now? What would you do if you looked at this hive and they have just now got their queen going and I'm only about two weeks away from my first frost killing all of my flowers, which is mainly goldenrod for me right now. But goldenrod doesn't really do a lot for me here in Illinois. It looks like it does. A lot of my hives smell like goldenrod. Uh, I can smell that funny smell coming out of them, especially at night when they're kind of ventilating the hive, but uh, not really impressive on as far as big stores of nectar. So what would you do? Put some comments down below. What would you do to that hive to beef it up for winter? Let me know what you're going to do. I'm going to tell you right now what I'm going to do. Well, first thing I need to do is feed them, right? I need more brood. I need lots of brood. I need to assist the queen. She's excited about laying eggs, larvae, pupae everywhere started. So I need to assist her not to let her stop doing that. And so I'm going to start feeding them one-to-one -one sugar water with some amino B boost, with some honey bee healthy, with some protein powder added. I'm going to put my burns feeder system on top, put a shell around it, put the top cover on. And I'm going to do that as long as I can until it drops below 50 degrees in the daytime. That way I can get a lot of bees of winter physiology. It was good to see some capped over brood in there. Those are gonna be bees that will last until spring. We need more of those frames. So we're doing pretty good. Everything's looking decent on the hive as far as they're wanting to pick up the pace after that big brood break because the queen must have failed and it took them a while to get a new queen established. But it was a perfect time of the year for a, a queen break like that because it's gonna help control mites. I went quite a ways uh, without any brood quite a long time. I was getting close to the 21 days of possibly getting laying workers. So if your hive goes without brood for 21 days, 
a lot of the worker bees will start laying eggs which are not fertilized and and those poor little uh, worker bees they can't really back down into cells really good like a big queen can and they don't care whether there's one egg or 15 eggs in a cell it's a mess if you get laying workers so uh, but anyway that didn't turn out that way made my job a lot easier and gave you some advice on doing a fall inspection pretty cool idea about the umbrella as well. I hope you enjoyed that. Well, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and by all means subscribe. I really want to talk to you about subscribing just for a second. Subscribing doesn't cost you anything. It's not a magazine subscription where you have to pay money. It just means that you, you're expressing your loyalty and commitment to what I'm doing here on YouTube by being a subscriber. It means if you click on the bell, then YouTube will let you know when I make a new video. Maybe they'll drop a little email to you and say, David made a new video. Do you want to watch it? Stuff like that. So it's an easy thing to do. If you're not familiar with how to do it, click on the red box down below in this video that says subscribe. Uh, plenty of ways that you can subscribe by even looking down in my description. And I've got a link that you can click on to subscribe to my beekeeping channel. Okay, well, thanks for joining me. Look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.